Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Disclaimer. The views and opinions expressed in this video are those of my own and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any other person or group of people. They do not purport to reflect the opinions or views of any group of people, person, or fanbase or its members. This video and the presentation of material therein do not imply the expression of any opinion other than mine. Hello and welcome to this video. Um, today's video we are going to be t discussing my thoughts and opinions on the 2003 science fiction channel or sci-fi channel um, Children of Dune miniseries. To start out this is once again one of those things in which you had a great script, decent enough actors, and a couple, you know, star actors. But unfortunately, there wasn't the money and the budget for this miniseries to be what it can be. Um, like the sci fi. Um, miniseries for Dune. This is a fairly close, um, very book faithful, or actually for this miniseries they combine two of the books, and they're pretty, the parts of the books that they use, they're fairly book accurate too. Um, the problem with Dune Messiah, which is the second book in the series, with Children of Dune being the third book, is the fact that uh, Dune Messiah is a rather boring book in a lot of respects. Um, it is a lot of politics, a lot of behind the scenes, intrigue, um, kind of, you know, suspenseful, or as suspenseful as you can get when one of your main protagonist, protagonists is omnipotent, omnipotent, and his own disillusionment self disillusionment of himself um, that being emperor at this point Emperor Paul Atreides um, it Dune Messiah is kind of in a lot of ways just a really long prologue for Children of Dune, which in Children of Dune we get into um, Paul's children, uh, Ganema and Leda the second. Second. Okay. Um, in case I didn't mention it in the other videos, and. Um, you haven't seen those particular adaptations and or have never read the book Cheney and Paul at near the end of Dune have their own child he's killed by the Harkonnens that was Leto or Leto depending on how you want to pronounce it the second and by the time we get to Children of Dune you have Leto the second 
second the second lead of the second depending on how you want to um, how you keep those things in your head but um, Paul is at this point at the beginning of Dune Messiah or the miniseries we're going to switch between the book and the miniseries quite frequently ergo spoilers ahead for Dune Messiah and Children of Dune um, both the books and the miniseries um, at the beginning of Dune Messiah or the beginning of the miniseries Paul has been on a galactic jihad for about 12 years. Um, he is, okay, he was 17 at the end of Dune. 12 would make him, what, 39 or 29, excuse me, 29 years old. Which is not a big deal, you know, late 20s. However, Aaliyah, his sister, at the end of Doom, was two years old. And 12 and 2 is 14. Something the miniseries did was age everybody up. It aged Aaliyah up. It, it aged Paul up a little bit more. And so we are at a point where the miniseries because of the content of the book even in the early 2000s probably the 90s and the 80s and Dune Messiah to, to, to properly do Alia you know completely book accurate you have basically a 14 year old girl who's very who's very sexually active and has no qualms about doing stuff in the nude or almost nude um so yeah for film and tv uh, yes, um, that would be real cringy, real fast, really highly inappropriate for modern people. People in 2024, America, yeah, that would be really cringy. And on top of that, the... We are introduced. We go into more detail about the Bini Talax, Talaxi, um, which are basically people organized, computer builders, cloners, um, who basically play with the the commandment of. Thou shalt not fashion a computer in the likeness of a human mind. They, they, they push that to its edge all the way around. Um, they're great at genetic manipulation. They're great at just about anything they want to do. Um, and they're pretty much guns for hire. Um, Though they find themselves in a conspiracy with the Bene Gesserit, Spacing Guild, and the remnants of the Padishah's Emperor's family, namely Ilion's younger sister. I believe she's the next one in line. Or she was. Ilion was the oldest, and I believe her sister in this particular one, the name escapes me right off, her name escapes me right off hand, but in the miniseries, she's portrayed by Susan Sarandon. From what I understand, from what I've read, 
Susan Sarandon is a huge Frank Herbert fan and a even bigger Dune uh, fan of the books. Um, so you have that. Um, so they're all in a conspiracy basically to overthrow Paul and his empire. Simply because in the last 12 years, Paul and his Fremen legions have managed to kill right around 63 billion, with a capital B in bold letters, billion people. Um, something that Paul himself is not happy with but he understands through his his visions his prescient visions that this was going to happen regardless of what he did or how he did it or tried to avoid it it was going to happen he's also in the process of terraforming arrakis um which a lot of the the fremen traditionalists are not happy with so they all the Fremen tra the Fremen traditionalists all of the other people the Bini Trilaxu the Bini Gesserit the Spacing Guild the remnants of the Padishah Imperial family are all trying basically to overthrow Paul and Paul pretty much knows it um and he actually because of his, his his prescient vision realizes that at some point he has to go um this leads into a lot of subterfuge a lot of uh craziness um Plus, Ilea is slowly going insane. Being preborn, um, and not having the wild genetics, as the Bene Gesserit would call from the Fremen, she is slowly losing herself into her past lives her ancestors i mean mind you she was she was born with all of that knowledge actually she was pre-born she had that knowledge before she was born um so yeah that's and because she didn't have anything to mitigate the force and the power of basically all of her ancestors all the way back to mother eve is you know kind of daunting um and it does drive her crazy though the personality of vlad harkonnen her uncle or actually her grandfather not her uncle her grandfather um, basically keeps the other personalities at bay while manipulating and driving her crazy um, which in the no in the novels she winds up taking her own life and in I believe in the miniseries it plays out a little bit different um, the kids um, while all this is going on Irulan has been secretly giving Chani um, 
birth control mixing it into her food so she cannot conceive an heir. The problem is, is the long-term use of these contraceptives in her food fermented a poison which would kill her when she got pregnant. And she did get pregnant. Um, she had twins, uh, Leto the second and Ganima. Um, and this kind of disturbs Paul, A, that the only real true love of his life died, and two, that his prescient vision did not show him twins. Um, and these two were also preborn. Um, and shortly after their birth, they, their mom dies. Um, it is through the Chinese genes and genetics that they survived or they didn't go down the same path that Aaliyah did. Um, the one of the things that was tried was the a clone or as they refer to in these books a golem a gola was created from the genetics of Duncan Idaho and presented to Paul Atreides as a gift from the guild um, the guild steersman spacing guild and his name is hate h-y-t-e hate um and hate is struggling with being his own person while simultaneously trying to discover who and what he is and why he is and reconnecting with the dunking Idaho part of his uh, past. Ilya falls in love with Duncan Idaho and is basically at 14 basically lusting and eventually gets with Duncan. They actually get married. And through the process of Duncan interacting with Paul or Kate interacting with Paul and Ilya, Stilgar, and all the other people, um, basically he, re he regains the Duncan Idaho part of himself. Um, and, and in further books, the Gola, the Duncan Idaho Gola or Golas because they get killed and get remade because Herbert had a Duncan Idaho thing going on. Um, there's been things that kind of indicate that maybe Herbert wrote Duncan Idaho as a author author stand-in so it is what it is um, and as far as these the books in the series the the books go 
and Denny DeVille Vanille Vanille whatever love the man he's a great director cannot pronounce his last name he when he did his movies he did not he took more of a book approach whereas the Lynch movie the miniseries the Dune miniseries and this miniseries try to put Paul and everybody on a hero's all, all your protagonists on a hero's journey but they're not they're not heroes in fact the only quote quote air quotes um, clean clear-cut white hat good guys in these novels is probably Duke Le Leto Paul's father Gurney Hollock Duncan Idaho Stilgar and Chani those five right there in this whole universe those are probably the only five decent human beings um, it's just kind of crazy that way um, that you know that they try to put you know more gray hat anti-hero type people they try they tried to make them white hat good guys they're not um none of them are um lady jessica lady jessica had returned to kaladin at between after the end of dune and before dune massage her and gurney hollock went back to kaladin where gurney hollock was regent governor of that planet um jessica returns to rakis when she finds out that her daughter is losing it and people are trying to kill her son um while well, all that's going on the remnants of the Padishah imperial family are in the process of kidnapping worms for Arrakis to try to get another place or planet or area to produce spice to break Paul's monopoly on the spice and that goes south fast and we've got all these moving parts just boom 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 and we are introduced to another creature uh, of the creation of the uh, Bene Talax is face dancers basically chameleons they can take basically they can take the form appearance and everything of just about anybody any other human um, one of those is basically bent on trying to assassinate Paul and his offspring but because of sci-fi mystical Bene Gesserit stuff Paul is able to see through his kids eyes and is able to save them and save himself Paul had also been blinded by a what they refer to is a stone burner which depending on how you want to read it or how you interpret it is basically a low yield nuclear weapon um, minimal fallout minimal damage 
but he was close enough to the blast that it blinded him. After the birth of his children, after he saves them from the uh, face dancer, Paul decides to embrace the old Fremen, a custom of the blind going into the desert as not to be a burden on the tribe. Now we actually get to Children of Dune. Um, in the miniseries, this is basically one episode. Episodes two and three focus on Leto the second and Ganema. They grow up. The there are more and more attempts on their lives. Um, at one point, the remnants of the Padasha imperial fa imperial family clone these wolf tiger monster things and basically set up set it up for the two kids for Leto and Ganema to get trapped in the desert and be pursued for those thing by those things. Leto basically confronts them, defeats them, separate of Ganema. Ganema is under the opinion her brother was killed. At this point she gets returned to the palace and Leto the second embarks on what is the goal what is known as the golden path he basically ingests tons and tons of spice and finds a pool of proto worms basically what they're called are sandfish basically these leech like creatures find an area and absorb all the water they pull all the water out of that area then when the population and the size gets to a certain point you have what's called a spice eruption or explosion and a lot of the the sandfish are killed and the ones that survive link in together and form sandworms and basically that's what Leto embarks on doing he's becoming a human worm hybrid and basically in the books it is it is decided that Ganema doesn't really need to know that this is her brother at this point so she's hypnotized to believe that Leto is dead and it isn't until later in the book when she finds out that this sandworm human hybrids are her brother. Meanwhile, a mysterious figure shows up in Arakeen, the capital city of Arrakis, calling himself the Preacher. And basically, he is preaching against everything that Paul Atreides stood for. Um, and is basically rallying revolt against his own, you know, against the Atreides Empire. It turns out that this preacher is Paul and 
he's returned from the desert through his just his breeding his mentet training his prescient vision he was able to survive and basically at the end of children of dune and they do this in the miniseries pretty well that him and the preacher aka paul atreides sit down on a sand dune and they discuss the golden path paul had seen the golden path in his visions but because his he loved chani more than he loved humanity he was unwilling to go down that path leto the second has no such attachments no such qualms no such um attachment to humanity that paul did so this enables him to go down the golden path which is brutal totalitarian authoritarian enslavement i mean it's and this is basically how children of dune ends and yes i hit all the high points and i strongly recommend watching this if you're a fan of dune um especially if you've read the books the like i said it is very very book accurate um unfortunately the budget didn't allow for this for this script to see its potential unfortunately it's just the 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 they were this is a case where they got screwed by the by the the accountants um and i am confident enough to say from what was changed in the current iterations of dune that this will remain a more book accurate um update ab, ab, uh iteration we'll go with iteration i like that word it's easier to say um to the to this it's beautiful well done um with like i said with the changes that were made at the end of dune 2 to 2024 dune i am trying i i am only guessing at what's what we're going to get in the third installment that um villeneuve is going to do um he stated that that's all he wants to do now if warner brothers decides to go move forward with god emperor of dune heretics of dune and chapter house dune i think those because they get weird they get very very interesting to follow there 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 are hundreds of plot threads and wonderful red herrings and all kinds of stuff throughout the the last three books and i think that doing miniseries would work better than trying to do those movies and do them as theatrical movies just simply because in a three or four hour movie you just don't have 
time to grap grapple with everything that is important in the, these books. Um, and I think I've mentioned this before in the other videos I've done cover, covering Dune that Frank Herbert was a grower and consumer and consumed I should say he consumed psychotropic mushrooms um, so that becomes real apparent from God Emperor of Dune through Chapter House um, it's interesting what I am what I am waiting for and I have I'm excited for it while at the same time I've tempered my expectations for the um, series of Dune Prophecy that's going to come out fall of this year 2024 um, Because this that is either going to be a really really good series or it's going to suck. A lot of it is going to depend on how close they file follow Brian Herbert's writings in the 2021 20, novels that he's done since his father's death. Um, they're not. It's hard to go Frank Herbert's is better than Brian Herbert's or Brian. It's hard to do that because the writing styles are so insanely different that it's, I mean, it is quite literally another author writing in a previous author's universe. Um, Brian Herbert's um, abstinence, abstinence from, or to the best of my knowledge, his abstinence from hallucinatory drugs is very apparent in his books. Yes, they have the requisite weirdness of his father's writings. But they're tempered um, so and I read somewhere that Brian Herbert is or was a consultant on the Dune prophecy prophecy series so that gives me a little bit of hope so I hope you enjoy the video um, like subscribe share if you want to um, the algorithm keeps hounding me about trying to beg people to like subscribe and share and if you do you do that's great that's cool and I thank you for it but if you don't feel like it I understand because I watch tons of YouTube videos that I just watch um, so I'm cool with that too. It's, you know, don't feel any obligation. I do this as a hobby, as something to do during the day when it's 104 degrees out in East Texas. So, um, if you, like I said, if you want to like, subscribe, share, whatever, do it. And if you don't want to, don't. It's, it's all good. So. Until next time, be good human, be good to other humans, peace. Hey, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are?